Sir, I wanted to know about hadith where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, killing house lizards is an act to earn sawab. When I searched the reason, I learned that it was because house lizards help igniting the fire where Hazrat Ibrahim was thrown. I am confused if that is the reason, is it justified to kill any home lizards? Considering the house lizards have free will in this dunya, then being rewarded after killing any house lizards seems unjust. Because every house lizard was not involved with the incident of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And if they don't have free will, rather they acted on Allah's commandment, that would be unjust too. Or is there actually other reason stated in Hadith or Quran for killing them? For example, the harmful effects. Of course, Allah and His Rasul know best. Okay, scratch, scratch. Scratch the beer. Maybe you can solve the problem now. Peace of Christ to all of you and those who believe in the house lizard issue. Uh, I say to you, I feel sorry for you. You are so slow. You are so stupid. You are so dummy. And you are not yummy. This is religion. So Mufti Mink, he have a video speaking about why he is a Muslim. But he don't tell you really what mean it means to be a Muslim. To be a Muslim is to be stupid as you see. That we believe in one God, we believe in the Prophet, we believe there is no meditator between us and God, and blah, 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 blah. And then if we check every point of them, we will find none of them is true. Because at the end of the day, you are a Muslim because you have no free will. This is Mufti Mink. <coughs> Hold on. This is Mufti Mink. Let me play for you the video. <laughs> and Mufti Mink is saying you, what does it mean to be a Muslim? What, uh, like what is that Muslim? You are a Muslim? You really are? Okay, what does that mean? Let us find out. Look at this face. Are you convinced really of what you are saying? Your faith doesn't tell me so. Tell us why you are a Muslim. Ah, oh, there's no sound. Hold on. Why is it that you have chosen the faith of Islam? Chosen? Muslim, they're chosen the faith of... Uh, is that what Islam teach? Is that what Islam teach? That a person he chosen Islam, isn't it your Muslim believe in destiny? That Allah chose your religion for you before you are born? <laughs> I mean, from the first second, he stopped making poo-poo. And here you see that those people, they don't know, you know, I mean, what they believe in. Either you are a sheikh, all of them, they scratch their head or their beard, you know, when they come to the point of poo-poo. You chosen to be a Muslim. Isn't your prophet, he says, everyone is born as a Muslim? So you chose to be a Muslim when you are born as a Muslim? Everyone is born as a Muslim. According to your prophet, me, myself, I was born as a Muslim. <laughs> and the only evidence of that is my mom telling me I used to do poo-poo in my pants. <laughs> the rest does not exist. This is what makes you, you choose to be a Muslim? Since when? And then we have a prophet, he came supposedly and he says, I've been commanded to kill all mankind until they convert or die. You choose to be a Muslim. So Allah, he created you a Muslim and then Allah want to force you to stay as a Muslim. And not only that, he will force you, not force you at the end of the day, what Allah wrote for you is going to take over. Nobody chose to be a Muslim, according to your religion. In fact, every act a human being do is not a choice. This is the same guy in different video saying the opposite. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, according to one of the uh, narrations, uh, he, had, he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, Oh Umar, oh Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah. 
Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. It's a good argument. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He says, mm -hmm. well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. Oh boy. Wow. Look at this intelligent. Wow. What a, what, what a smart religion. So the first guy was destined to be a thief. Did not choose to be. The second guy, he outsmarted the first one. Which means that Islam is a game. It's not about ethic or rules. Okay, if Allah destined for me to be a thief, why you want to punish me? And he agreed. This is a good question if you want to look at it. This is a good argument, actually, he said. Good argument if you want to look at it. The other guy is this out to smart the first one because Islam is a game. He said, well, it's destiny for me to punish you. So now both we do not know why this is happening because it's just destiny. So the first one being a thief is a destiny. The second one punishing the first one, not because he's a thief, no, but because it's a destiny. And then this guy tells us why you are a Muslim. Why, why he's a thief? Destiny. Why the other one is a caliphate? Is a destiny. Why is punishing the first one? Destiny. Why somebody fornicate? Destiny. Why somebody kill? Destiny. Why somebody steal? Destiny. Why somebody lie? Destiny. So why we punish them? It's destiny. This is the stupid Islam. So they they, they try to rephrase things for you. Says we believe in one God. Who cares if you believe in one God or ten God or seven a living God? The question is, do your God even make sense? And then Mufti Mink, supposedly he is a smart person, he says to you, uh, we believe in one creator, but isn't it the Quran says he is the best of the creators? You believe in what? In one creator. What does that mean? So if there is other creator appear in the field, you, you leave the first one and you worship the second one. And when Allah, he said in the Quran, he is the best of the creators, did he use the wrong Arabic? And then Abdul, he tried to explain to you, says to you, oh, you know, like you make a bicycle. So, well, that's even more stupid. If we say that making a bicycle is a creation, this is a creative idea, but not a creation, creation of religion. Is somebody creating life or creating something from nothing? Creating a bicycle, this is not a creation, this is a creative idea. I have material, I put them together, I make a design. But if you are saying to me, you create a bicycle, and Allah is saying He is the best of the creator, that means Allah is saying He is the best of the, the one who created create bicycles. Because when, when you compare about, uh, 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 let us say we have a competition, we compete in the same thing. We don't compete about making camel. You make camel, I make a bicycle. So if I say I'm the best between those, that I mean, I am comparing myself to them. And then the Muslim, they said to you, you cannot compare Allah to anyone. Allah himself compared himself to us. If this is what you meant. If you are saying that Allah compared himself to creators, that means there's other gods. So either way you go, your God is in the pupu dance. This is the stupid Quran. Supposedly, this is coming from Muhammad, police be upon him, saying the following. By the way, if you are a Muhammad, my Skype is open. Do we have the right Skype in the info? Maybe the admin can check for us. This verse in the front of us, it says, Blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. And they say to you that Allah speak perfect Arabic. I doubt that he knew even what Arabic is about. How Allah speak perfect Arabic, and then he says he is the best of the creators. Don't you, didn't he knew by saying such a phrase, he just admit that there's other creators? Not to forget to mention that 
the statement here about the creation proving that Allah cannot be any creator of anything. Because Allah, he think that he created the baby from a sperm and that the sperm become a congealed blood. Become a dead blood. So this is the best of the creator. He do not know how the baby is created. A high school student, he knew the, how the baby is made. Yet this is a God who do not know how baby is made. So, in one hand, they can try, try to claim to say, well, Allah is the creator. Okay, let us examine his, uh, his, his text and we will find in two seconds that he cannot be the creator of anything. Even the funniest stories in the Quran is not created by Allah, as an example. This is story. Even this story is a theft. At least be a, th a story creator. At least. This is a story coming from the books of the Legion of the Jews. The Legion of the Jews speak about Suleiman, have a ring. Suleiman controlled the genies. You know, the rabbis, you know, those rabbis, they fabricate stories. They love to fabricate stories. <clears throat> to control the crowd. You know, I find that Jewish rabbis and Muslim sheikhs, they are too much in the same pant. They fool, the, like if you ask a rabbi, where do you get a story from? If this story is read a story, read a story why is it not in the, in, in the Torah? Why is it not in, the, in, the, in your holy book? Where do you get a story from? Nobody knows. And Muhammad, because he's a thief, he copied the story, he wrote in his Quran, and he adds some spice to it. So suddenly we find that Suleiman have a flying carpet. But this is not suddenly really. It's a story taught by the stupid rabbis of the Jewish, learned by the stupid Muhammad, believed in it because the rabbi said it to him, and he is a certified liar, an idiot. And he put it in the Quran. And now what the Muslim can do with it? And then this guy, he was trying to be logical, supposedly, about why I'm a Muslim. He's trying to convince us with this. Yeah, and they, and they sing it for you to, to demolish the stupidity of the text. Sing it. Supposedly. Of using the wind that covered a journey of one month in one morning. <laughs> Allah says, in the afternoon, it covered the journey of another month. So oh. in one day, you would cover the journey of two months. That's what Allah says. Mm. What would happen? He had bisat. He had a laid sort of a wooden. <laughs> one wonders exactly how it was. We only know the word that is used here to describe it. Say, more or less, a mattress or a platform. Mattress. His army or members of his army were instructed to sit on it. And he told the wind, take. <laughs> All his army, they sit on the mattress and they fly. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the religion they are so going around. You know, I see those people making a debate supposedly, like I saw uh, uh, David Wood and they are talking about a debate. You will notice that those people who choose the, the topic, they are dummy. Like the, the host who bring the Christians and the Muslims. And even the Christians, by the way, they are not really even smart enough to say, you know what, what, what killing, do you want to debate about killing? Who killed who, who killed who? What about we investigate the stupidity and then we would know if Muhammad is a prophet and the story is over. So the Muslim, they love to see a Christian who is not high with the IQ debating them and they avoid the serious issues. Suddenly, the serious issue that who killed who? This is not a serious issue. Because anyone can justify killing. Even a criminal can justify killing. Even a rapist can justify. Okay, she is wearing a short skirt. Oh, I get horny. If she is a decent woman, she will not wear this. Here we go. He justify it. You agree, you don't agree, he justify it. They don't know how to debate. I never saw really anyone, even Muslims or Christians, they are like kids 
in the teen age, even though they have a beard and they are growing by age, but they don't know. I mean, the topic even is wrong. This is a prophet of God. The guy and his army in the top of a mattress, and they are flying. And the mattress fly. One month journey by the morning, and one month journey by afternoon. And, and why? What is the mattress, by the way? What happened to the mattress? The army of, the army of this guy, Solomon, is 3,500 miles long. So you can imagine how, the, how big the mattress. The mattress have to be 3,500 miles long, at least. And add to it that uh, uh, Suleiman, he have is in even his houses in the top of it. His wives, his cook, his kitchens. The whole kingdom is flying. His horses, his, uh, his, uh, the food, the sheep, the camels, everything in the top of the mattress. And what the Christian did debate about? Uh, your prophet, he killed those people. It's good to mention them, to prove a point, but this is not the reason to accept Muhammad a prophet or not. He can justify it. This is why Christians need to learn how to debate the Abdul. Until now, they do not know. This is why you notice that all those who want to debate from the Muslims, they come to all those who they are not me. Why none of them he line here to debate me? Where are they? None. Zero. They speak against me. They make videos. A, a Christian doesn't say that CP. A lie 106 of CP. Call me and let us see if it's a lie or not. They don't dare. They make a video. They debate me in the video. But I am not in the video. And they want the debate. My Skype is open. Who want to call me live on air and win the debate? Do you dare? I will put you in the corner regardless if the room is a circle or a square. So now, Suleiman, why am I Muslim? Because I have a belief in this garbage. This is the truth. Not, not because you believe in one God. What God? One God. What is one God? You know, even the idea of saying one God, one God, even that you, you copy from the Jews. Because if you believe really in one God, then why you associate the name of Muhammad with the name of Allah? Isn't it this is what shirk supposedly to associate the name of a man with the name of God? You put the name of Muhammad with the name of Allah in one line? And not only that, the Muslim, they keep saying Allah and his prophet knows best. That means Muhammad and Allah, they are equal in knowledge. Knows best. This is what you say. As an example, just to show you how both of them they knew best. Muhammad was riding the donkey. And nothing wrong with that. This is not our topic. Muhammad, he asked his companion, who is riding behind him, because it's risky to sit in the front of Muhammad. Muhammad, he said to him, do you know where this set, which means the sun? I, I was sitting be, <laughs> behind the Messenger of Allah. Look, even they don't even dare to say the name of Muhammad without uh, S-A-W-S. Uh, -S like, uh, you have, you know. They, uh, and now they are shortening it with letters because the sentence is so long. Uh, actually, the, the, the praying to Muhammad, pra praising Muhammad is longer than the story itself. So they decide to do what? They decide to take a letter from every word, shorten it, so nobody will accuse them. You are not praising the Prophet. What, what are you doing? You cannot say his name without praising him. The Christian, they say Jesus. They don't say S W. A N F G H O E alphabet. This is Jesus. And this is supposedly their God. The Muslims, they have to add a long line and they will say to you, respect Muhammad. This is not respect, this is an act of worship. You don't even add that to the name of Allah. But continue. So he was on a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, Do you know where the sun set? I replied, 
Allah and as apostle knows best. Who share knowledge with Allah? Muhammad. Who knows more? They are equal. Did you see Muhammad saying to him, why you say that? Don't say that. Allah only knows best. No. Muhammad loved it. Actually, he, this is why he is now asking this guy a question. Do you know where the sun set? Muhammad is making a show. And the show is, I am the one who knows where the sun set. And now Muhammad delivered the poopoo. What is the poopoo? The sun set in the boiling water of a spring of water. In the old generation, people, they could not explain why there is water coming from the ground, which is boiling. What is that? Oh, this is the sauna of the sun. <laughs> the sun goes there. <laughs> and, make, and, make, and make the water boil and come back again. Otherwise, I challenge Muslims to tell me, what is this? This is taught by Allah. And then the Muhammadan, you show them the same verse in the Quran about uh, Alexander the Great, where he found where the sun set, set exactly as Muhammad said. And the Muhammadan, they said to you, we don't accept any hadith unless I agree with the Quran, which is very, very stupid because uh, the Quran is abrogated by the hadith. Not only does not agree, abrogating the Quran. And this one, confirming the Quran, still they, they, try, they try to say, no, 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 no. Zul Qurnayn, Zul Qurnayn. He, this is how he saw it. This is not how it is, Abdul. What are you talking about? Where, where in the Quran it says it appeared to him? It doesn't say that. CP, what the heck? And then the guy from Indonesia, he called me. Christian Prince, give me the answer, Christian Prince. Oh, man, speak like a man to me. What are you? What, what, did you lose your, your, your screws? Like somebody took them off before you call me? Christian Prince, I want to question Christian Prince. Why you don't answer me, Christian Prince? Abdul, focus with me. Christian Prince, I don't want to answer this one. I want to talk about this one. Christian Prince, what the heck? Another guy, in order to refute me, he decided to give me five BMWs. Christian Prince, I challenge you to answer this question. I will give you five BMW. This is voice, by the way. If you can answer the first question, like, what the heck? Five BMW, why well, don't make it six, man? I mean, metaphorically at least. <laughs> Number one question. Where Jesus Christ, he said, I am Christian. Like, what the heck? How am I going to answer this? The guy is challenging me all the way from Indonesia. Putting me in the corner, and now I have to find him where Jesus Christ is, is a Christian. Those are the ones who want to bring you to Islam. Jesus Christ saying he is a Christian. Why? He was following himself. So like a Christ, he met with the Christ. And the first the Christ said to the second Christ, I believe in you. I'm going to follow you. I'm from now today a Christian. And then the second Christ said to the first Christ, Hey, listen. If you are Christ, you don't call yourself Christian. The first Christ, according to Islam, he should say, he's a Christian, a hello, because now Christ is following Christ, and he believes in Christ. This is a very low, low IQ religion. So why am I a Muslim? Who want to call me in Skype? Let me see, do we have the correct uh, Skype address on the info? Yeah, we have the correct one. If you are a Muslim and you think you can tell me why you are a Muslim, please feel free. I will be happy to take you and let us have a nice conversation. And then, uh, if we continue with uh, Mufti Mink speaking about why he's a Muslim, you will find that he is saying nothing there. I mean, if you, oh, I thought you want to tell us really why you are a Muslim, but all what you are saying to me is a theft. I have nothing to do with you because you don't believe in any of those what you say in the video. Many people born Muslim have probably not even thought about it. But a day may come when someone might ask you, and you might not have thought of the deep reasoning, and oh. so you may not have 
at times, perhaps due to lack of knowledge, a convincing response. Mm. And if you have embraced the fold of Islam later on in life, mashallah, congratulations, may Allah bless Mashallah. And goodness, not just to you, but to all of us. <laughs> and may Allah bless humanity at large and guide us all. Ameen. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, Islam is a blessing to humanity. This is why we have security in their planes. This is why, you know, a woman, she just ate pork and said Bismillah before she ate pork. And she will stay for two years in jail because a human being is blessed by Islam. It's, this is blessing. This is the mercy of Islam. She just ate little tiny pork and she doesn't even like it supposedly in the video. And because this is a religion of hypocrisy, they, all the nation went after her and they put her in jail. Their women are naked in Jakarta. Their women are naked in Pali. Night club, drinking, homosexual, all things in, 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 the, in the heart of the Islamic, uh, uh, this Islamic country. Nobody see it. But the women, she said in the video, Bismillah. <laughs> Suddenly the whole nation over her. <laughs> A nation of hypocrite. Potatoes. Literally. But we need to know when we say La ikraha fi deen. Ah, here we go. And now he says to you, Allah, don't force people to believe. But this is false. This is something Muhammad he said to the Jews. That you cannot force your children not to convert to Islam, not the opposite. I will play what he is saying, and then I will show you what, how we can prove that those people are a bunch of liars. Repeating the verse of the Quran, the words of Allah, mm -hmm. there is no compulsion in deen, in the religion. What does it mean? It means no one can force you to enter the fold of Islam. Uh, look, Once you enter the fold of Islam, uh -huh. you have adopted something through your own free will oh uh -huh. uh, really uh, okay okay guys nobody can force you to enter into islam so muhammad is a liar then here we go That verse has totally different meaning because all the religion of Islam about forcing people to convert to Islam. This is Muhammad talking. And as you see, no, we are not showing you things from our own with the proofs and reference which is authentic. Muhammad being commanded to kill all mankind. Until they testify that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is Prophet. He has to put his name next to it. And then if you do so, the thief Muhammad and his gang, they will not take your property. They will not shed your blood. Except if you decide to leave Islam again or you don't pay Muhammad money, even after you convert to Islam. And those hadith is all over. Look at this. I've been commanded to kill. Do you see the word fight in Arabic? This is uqatil. Uqatil, fight in English doesn't really describe the word uh, uh, Uqatil. Fight in English, it can be two people just, you know, fighting, like, you know, by, even by words. This is about killing them by sword. Until, so what is the condition? Until they convert to Islam. And then you will see there, it says their blood. Does it say blood? Their blood and their property is secured. So we are talking about blood now. But in the video, they say to you, nobody can force you to convert to us now. So all those videos are propaganda, marketing. They are marketing videos to fool non-Muslims. And man, there's a lot of donkeys in this earth. In fact, for me, if you ask me, I believe Islam prey on those who have a low IQ. You know, when there's a wolf or a bunch of wolves watching uh, like uh, uh, animals in the field, let us say wild animals, they don't target really the strong one of them. They go for the young, 
they go for the weak, they go for the sick, they go for the one who his leg is broken, he cannot run, and they hunt. They hunt in what? They prey on the weak one. This is Islam. This is why we don't see the Muslims coming here and says, okay, you know what? I'm going to see how strong you are. I'm going to hunt you. Here they are potatoes. So they go between the crowd to see who of you, he cannot run, who of you is not knowledgeable, who of you is not informed, who of you is a slow. And they prey on you if you are one of those. And Islam as whole and as details, which means nothing you can escape from being a stupid in Islam. Nothing. Actually, I challenge any Muslim to show me one thing in Islam is not stupid. Anything. Even when they speak about Christ, the whole story, it doesn't make sense. Even when they say, that Mary, she was a virgin. You ask them, why in Islam Mary is a virgin? It doesn't make sense in Islam. It makes sense only in Christianity. The Christian believe that the Messiah is God who came to this earth. Okay. So, he's not going to be born of sexual relationship. Okay, that makes sense. Jesus says, I'm from above, you are from below. Okay. In Islam, why Jesus is born a virgin? Nobody knows. And if this is a miracle, to show ability of God, well, nobody can prove it. I can say my mother, she gave birth to me when she was a virgin. Your mother, she can claim the same thing. Nobody is going to go between the legs of women to see if she was a virgin before that or after. So even the stories which is coming from other belief in Islam, they lost their meaning. And then, you will find the stupidity, you know, go uh, far beyond the stupidity. Not only those people, they believe in stupid things. Look at this guy. A Muslim girl, she wouldn't know why you need to kill a lizard. If this lizard even is not the one, look at the story. The story is that there is a lizard once upon the time. A king, he put Abraham in the fire. He wanted to burn him because he believed in Allah. He put the fire. He commanded his army. Put the wood under the fire. And the fire was going crazy. And all the animals came from everywhere. All, all, all. Even the pig, yes, brother. Even rats, yes, brother. Hey, all. Except one animal. Who? Mr. Lizard. No way. And they speak to you and they want to convince you that Islam is logical. Like, you know, listen, listen, <laughs> the Trinity is not logical. Islam is logical. Mm. Because how's lizard help igniting the fire where Hazrat Ibrahim salam was thrown? I'm confused if that is the reason, is it justified to kill any home lizard? Considering the house lizards have free will in this dunya, then being rewarded after killing any house lizards seems unjust because every house lizard was not involved with the incident of Hazrat Ibrahim look look this is a Muslim girl her name is Sarah even the name they copy from the Jews or the Christians so listen this girl she's asking a very good question which is very weird I mean Muslims they are thinking something going wrong since when that's weird so she's saying maybe somebody Christian asked her the same question and now she is thinking about it she has asked Zachary Naik if if, 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 if the lizard, he did that to Abraham a few thousand years ago, why want I kill every lizard in the world? Are they all his babies? And don't you Muslim, you will say that nobody should pay for the sin of somebody else? Huh? So Mr. Lizard, he did a sin. Oh, what an evil lizard you are. This is so cute. So he tried to burn Abraham. And now we want to kill every... So a lizard who lives in Japan, he is the son of the lizard who was living in Israel. 
Is that the first lizard in the earth, like uh, the story of Adam and Eve? So this was Adam lizard, and then he have a girlfriend. Her name is Eve lizard. And when Adam lizard married from Eve lizard Dean, they have little teen lizards. And they start having sex and spreading babies everywhere. So she's asking, okay, if the first lizard, if one lizard, he did that, why wanna kill the lizard today? And now the Quran and Yuka will solve the problem. It's easy. Is it easy? Zach and I can solve any problem in a second. Listen carefully. Sir, I wanted to know about hadith where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, killing house lizard is an act to earn sawab. When I searched the reason, I learned that it was... Let me translate what he said. This is stupid. He said things which nobody understand. Supposedly now he knew Arabic. Sawab, which means you get a good deed. So imagine you kill the lizard, Allah will put in your bank account of deeds, deeds for killing the lizard. That's all. You are a mujahid now. Jihad against lizard. So you kill the lizard, he give you a thawab. Thawab means deeds. Okay, continue. Because house lizards help igniting the fire where Hazrat Ibrahim was thrown. Uh -huh. I'm confused if that is the reason, is it justified to kill any home lizards? Uh, this is the first Muslim I see is confused. That's not fair. You are confused. All of you are confused. If we ask you even who is Allah, you do not know. Okay, so well, well she is confused. Considering the house lizards have free will in this dunya, then being rewarded. Guys, the house lizards have a free will in this, in this earth. What, what? The house lizard, considering that the house lizard have a free will, you Muslims don't believe in free will anyway, but to make it about a free will even for lizard, that is even more funny. The house lizard, he have a free will. This girl, she must be a philosopher. He have a free will. Lizard, who is a lizard here would like to debate me about your free will? You have a free will or you don't have a free will? The house, the conclusion, brothers and sisters, Considering that house lizards have a free will, have war, house lizard have a free will. If he have a free will, he will not have chosen to be a lizard, you eat a potato. <laughs> house lizard have a free will. <laughs> I'm going to die one day laughing life on air with heart attack. And then the Muhammad Ali will say, Allah killed him. Yes, brother, Allah killed him. Did you see how he died life on air? Brother, Allah killed him. Like, uh, Abdullah, I'm going to die one day. I mean, everybody would die. Allah killed him. Allah killed him. Abdul, even your prophet died. He died even by poison. Four years, he's vomiting. The guy, he have a diarrhea. He faint, he wake up, he faint, he wake up, he faint, he wake up. Did Allah kill him? Allah killed Christian Prince, brother. He died today. So one day I will die and they will say, Allah Akbar, Allah killed the, 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 the infidel Christian prince. Allah give time, but always revenge, brother. <laughs> Can Allah kill my books too? Mm. Continue, continue. Give us your logic, the Quran and Yuka. Considering the house lizards have free will in this dunya, then being rewarded after killing any house lizards seems unjust. Because every house lizard was not involved with the incident of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And if they don't have free will, rather they acted on Allah's commandment, that would be unjust too. Or if they actually are the reason stated in Hadith or Quran for killing them, for example, the harmful effects, of course, Allah and His Rasul know best. Allah and His Rasul know best. Yes, <coughs> crash it, crash it. What the brother is referring to? Now, now he was going to answer. I, I did not, by the way, I did not watch this video yet. I don't know what he would say. But let me assume. But it's it. You know, they have to repeat the question. I mean, you just say the question. The reason they repeat the question, he's trying to swallow it. You know, like he, he himself, he needs to repeat it. And let us say what, should I predict what he would say? Honestly, I did not watch the video yet. You know, before I start, I just look for. Actually, I don't know where the topic I would go, so I chose anything in my face. Let us see what he will say. 
to the various hadith in which the Prophet did say that you can kill house and desert. Arabic, the word is wazak. In English, it is gecko. Gecko. There's hadith, various hadith. I'll just quote to you three hadith. Three uh-huh. hadith. Which three hadith. Will inshallah clarify. Inshallah, inshallah. Question. Uh-huh. There's hadith in, say, Muslim. Hadith number 5844. Uh-huh. Drink, drink. Is that camel urine or this is water? Just be careful, brother. If it's too, if camel urine, I mean, it's healthy. If it's water, it, there may be, may be a bacteria in it. So you better stick with the camel urine. Hadith in Sayyid Muslim, word number six, hadith number 5844, where the beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, said that he enjoined the killing of Vathak, Gekko, Prophet, he enjoined. Man, it was a pleasure killing you, man. <laughs> this is a prophet of God. He was enjoying killing a lizard. You know, I thought he would say I was enjoying having sex with you, Aisha, at the age of six. I thought he would say I was enjoying drinking camel urine because it's so tasty. I was expecting him to say, I was enjoying taking shower with dead dogs and women blood from period and garbage and a stinky water. But he was enjoying killing a lizard. Why? What is the joy in it? Because they... Because... Stop here. When a Muslim, he said, because... Forget about every cause. The Muslims is the only one have the good cause. There's a good goal. Good, no, it's a good cause, you know, brother. Because, because what? Tell us. They are, they are poetic. That means they are venomous. They are venom. They are harmful. They are poisonous. <laughs> a similar hadith of the same topic is uh-huh. in Sahih Muslim, volume number six, hadith number five, four, four, seven. Stop looking at the computer screen. Okay, go. And here, beloved Prophet Muhammad said that if you kill a wasakh or a gecko or a house lizard, in the first blow, you'll get 100 hasnat. If you... This is the remind me when my cousin was in the army. His captain, he said, today the general is coming and we want to show you, show him how good we are in shooting. So the first one, he shoot and he hit the target in the head. He will get 10 days vacation. The one who hit the target with two bullet, he will get five days vacation. The one who hit with a third bullet, he will get only three days vacation. My cousin Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, what if I hit the general in his heart? <laughs> My cousin, he got the target wrong. <laughs> this is why it's not right to give a Muslim a sniper machine. So he got it wrong. He thought they are saying, we want to show him how we can hit him in the head or in the heart. <laughs> so this Abdul now is explaining to you where to hit. Hit in the head of the general or in the, his heart. Tell us, give us details. Or a gecko or a house lizard. In the first blow, you'll get 100 hasnat. Uh-huh. And if you kill in the second blow, you'll get less hasnat. If you kill in the third blow, then lesser us not. Oh. Drink, drink more, drink more. Mm-hmm. The lie is getting bigger. So this was mentioned in Stay Muslim, uh-huh. volume number six. Uh-huh. Hadith number 5847. Mm-hmm. So here we come to know from this hadith that the reason that the Prophet has commanded us to kill a house lizard is because it is that is, it is venomous. It is a venom. And it has 
potato for waysiq mean he is the, is a bad doer this is coming from the word fasiq potato this guy don't speak arabic you don't speak arabic and he want to teach muslims arabic do you remember when the Indonesian they made a video about Christian prisoners not know Arabic? Do you remember? The Muslim uh, in Indonesia they don't they were so desperate to how they can stop this guy. He's invading Indonesia. Muslims, millions of Muslims watching his videos. So they come with an idea. Christian friends do not know Arabic. <laughs> I don't know what is my own language, man. I don't know what I am talking about. I don't know Arabic. Okay, tell us the one who knows Arabic, Zakir Naik, who did not even do that, he didn't speak a single Arabic word. Do that, this is why you see him in the stage when he go to the Middle East, he have a translator from English to Arabic. Go, go, tell us what does that mean? Harmful effect. So the main reason is given in this hadith, and that is the reason Allah said you'll get Hasna. But there's one more hadith, which is there in, in, uh, uh, Say Bukhari. Uh -huh. Drink again, drink again. I mean, what's wrong with what you ate? The camera urine is so salty. Allah Prophet said in Say Bukhari, one number four, hadith number 3359, that he said that kill the house lizard, and this same house lizard used to blow in the fire where Ibrahim salam was. Guys, the same. This is the same house lizard. So, the same house lizard was alive 3,000 years ago. 4,000 years ago. The same house lizard. This is the same one. Take a note. We have him photographed. We have him in the police with the mug. <laughs> what? This is the same lizard, the Quran and Yuka. Are you sure? How you know? How you know? Did you have your finger, his fingerprint taken at that time? This is the same one. Maybe he drank from the fountain of youth, which your prophet he mentioned it, and he never died since then. Was he in the movie? It's called The Parrot of the Caribbean. Tell us, tell us. He said that kill the house lizard. And the same house lizard, the same, used to blow in the fire where Ibrahim salam was. Here the hadith doesn't say that you have to kill because he is the descendant of a lizard which blew. Ah. It's just giving information ah. that this is the same category ah. of... Ah. You know. Zakir Naik, now he doesn't know what to say to this girl. I can't tell. Abdul, what do you mean it doesn't say that this is the reason? What do you mean, potato? You are fooling who? Fooling yourself? Fooling the Muslims? Muslims who agree with this potato? That doesn't say the reason? Huh? Uh, let's see. Just to show you that this guy is a fraud. Like the rest of them. Who made Islam as a business. He did not say that to the reason? Are you sure? Yes, brother. Are you sure again? Yes, brother. Abdul, I will repeat for the third time. Are you sure? Well, this is the hadith. Read it with me. Umm Sharik told Allah Messenger, Order to kill the guy go to be killed saying the guy go blow in on Abraham. We just said this, it doesn't say that. CT we just said that. 
So Muhammad told why we should kill the Gaigo in their houses in the time of Muhammad, not in the time of Abraham. Abraham is dead and all the people they were around him are dead. So those potatoes, when they try to answer anything, they try to go in the limbo, in a circle, so you know they will, they will not give you the answer. The whole point is how we can avoid the answer. What is the video of Zakur and Ayuka? Not this one, hold on. Not this one. This one is more funny. Let's go back here. Go back a little bit. He's just giving information Wait. that this is the same category of blizzard. His ancestors blew in the fire to increase it in the fire which Ibrahim Salam was put. Indicating that by nature the lizards are evil. Hadith never says that you have to kill because the ancestors blew. Did you see how they lie? Did you see how they lie? The Hadith never say so. Muslims. What's wrong with those shakes? Your prophet did not say so. Your prophet did not say because he was blowing on the fire to burn Abraham. But we just showed you the reference. And this is explained in the Quran, chapter 21, verse number 68. Why we kill him? Because he blow at Abraham. Let us uh, copy it again, hold on. So in order to answer this poor girl who's saying, why in the world we want to kill? If, okay, if the story is true, that the, the grand-grand-grandfather of this lizard did this. So what is, the, what is the point of killing this poor lizard today? What he did? So now Zakir Naik, he deny that Muhammad, he said, that this is the main reason to kill the lizard today. And look how many times this story is repeated. Do you see it? This is a different one. They lie. They lie and they love to lie. But let us continue with the liar to the end of the movie. Where he will go, where he will end. Let us see what the story will finish. Not this guy. Why does this guy keep coming to me? What? Here, here. Okay, number two. Continue, continue. The reason for killing is given in the other, given the other hadith I quoted earlier, or Sai Muslim, that because they are venom. Ah, and see? There are various other harmful creatures which the Prophet has commanded. The Prophet said the lizard, whether it's in the house or whether it's in the farm, it's talking about a particular kind of lizard. These kind of lizards which are harmful. And today we know that these lizards, because of it can cause... Guys, did he say in the beginning that the one who mentioned, his mention is Gaigo? Or what they call it? Did he mention that? Let us go and check if this is a harmful lizard. He mentioned the lizard. What kind of lizard we should kill? He mentioned what kind of lizard we should kill. Lizard are the snake. Lizard don't bite a human. 
lizard don't have poison and now we are talking about lizard who live in the house in the house it's a house lizard which house lizard is poisonous you can put them in your hands you can play with them they never harm you in fact those lizards are very useful for us as a human they help to control the environment from insect you know uh, uh, like one of the uh, creatures who can help a human being to control bugs population is a frog but frog need water frog cannot survive in a desert and if the frog will be located it have to be a place where always there's water but lizard fit perfectly or any in any community lizard can grow in Arizona in Nevada in Hawaii there's rain no rain it doesn't matter and all of them they eat the same thing they are not interested in our food and they don't eat even our like you know if you are growing plants or they don't eat it they eat insect so having them around is very useful this is a religion from God and what about we discuss the story about how this lizard was able to blow air on the fire of Abraham I mean the fire made by a king A king who ordered his army to make a fire. So what this fire was a match? Who need a lizard to make it ignite? A lizard. And all the creatures, they come over to stop the lizard, to stop the fire. Who in the world want to believe? in such a garbage story and not to forget to mention supposedly even according to Islamic resource that there's a lot of people watching the whole nation watching the whole army of the guy watching and now lizard he came from between the crowd To burn Abraham? Who in the world wanna believe a Muslim or Islam or Muhammad? Do we have any Muhammadan in the bushes? Anyone? The lizard worshippers, uh, believers, lizard? Cause a lot of diseases among the human beings. These house lizards, they travel, they can go to the food, they can leave their droppings in the food, they can urinate, they go on the wall, they leave their droppings because of which a various diseases, it can harm the human beings. So because they are harmful, the Prophet told you should kill. And there are various other harmful worms in which the Prophet has asked you to kill. For example, scorpion, for example, snakes, for example, right, uh, uh, mice, for example, rats. I know, I know. The Muhammadan, they have a fatwa to kill Mickey Mouse because he is the enemy of Allah. And here, by the way, you will see how stupid this religion is. Tell me who is your enemy, I'll tell you your size. This God, his enemy is a lizard. His enemy is a mice. How a mice enter the ship of Noah? If you if you read the story, you will die laughing. How the lion enter the ship of Noah? You, if you read the story, you will 
have a like a lava fornicator. Which means you fornicate with the stupidity of this story. When Noah trying to get his donkey inside the ship, how Shaitan entered the ship? Very simple. Shaitan, he hold the donkey from his tail. Noah, he command the donkey to move. The donkey is not moving. Move! The flood is coming. Move! Is the last animal. Donkey. Move! The flood is coming. The donkey is not moving. It turned to be that Shaitan is holding the donkey from his tail. And the flood is coming and Noah see the waves coming. So Shaitan, in the last moment, he is discussing with Noah. Listen, I can let the donkey get in so you can close the door if you allow me to get in. And then Noah, what he can do? Okay. Get in, Shaitan. He got Shaitan in the, in the ship. How the cat is created according to Muslims? When Noah, he closed the door, his people told him they found the mice, but he did not invite the mice to get in. What the heck? So he prayed to Allah. Allah, what I will do? The mice now, he will make hole in the wood. The mice now will eat our food, will spoil it. So Allah, he made the lion sneeze and two cats came from his nose. It's you. Makes sense. The cat looked like a lion. So the lion sneezed, the cat came from his mouth. And since then we have cats. This is Islam. Who of you is a Muhammad and he dare to say to me, Christian Prince, you are lying. Who of you dare to call me and ask me to show you the story? And I will make you read it. You don't. You don't dare. And listen, the question is, why we should, shall kill, why we should kill a lizard? Here, this guy, he denied that his prophet said in Al-Bukhari that we kill the lizard because of one reason, he blow at Abraham. Muhammad made it clear and this is a very authentic hadith. And by the way, authentic hadith means it's a lie. Because as you see, there's nothing is authentic in Islam. Not even the Quran. Those people, the Muhammadan. They have no religion. All their religion simply is a collection of his stories. Nobody knows where they are coming. We don't even know if Muhammad ever is exist. There is no proof whatsoever of his existence. They don't even know. Like you know, there is a guy he called me from time to time. He remember this African guy. He said to me, the Muslim they, they think if they say they believe in the Quran only. That will make them uh, like more, uh, let us say, protected from the accusation. But that will not help you really because the Quran is even more stupid than the Hadith. But those are people who their Prophet say to them, don't write down anything. Don't what? Don't write down anything except the Quran. What does Abdul they do? They write down, the Prophet said, don't write anything except the Quran. But he just told you don't write this. This is a religion of the low IQ. Imagine the government May the law says anyone will write on the wall 
he would be fined. Then you go and you say, the government said, writing on the wall. You are doing the very act which you suppose not to do. He just told you, and this is your prophet, don't write anything I say except the Quran. Not only that, actually, he said you should erase it. You should erase it. So, in their books, which is authentic, it says the hadith should be erased. They write the hadith should be erased. And they have tens of thousands of hadith which is supposedly what Muhammad said or his companion said about something he did. Or he said. This is how stupid this cult is. So the problem of the Muhammadan cult is not only, you know, I mean, violence and those are nothing compared to other problems. To be a Muslim is to be a low IQ. Never ask a question, as Quran chapter 5, 101 says, ask no questions. Verse 102 says, because former generation before you, they are the same questions. And they lost their faith. Muhammadan, they like to debate with the Christians about violence in the Quran because that a topic will take to nowhere. A trinity. Anything else is not welcome. And the Christians, sadly, especially those who claim that they are the one who stand for Islam, they always fail to the trap and they are not good in debate. For a very simple reason. Number one, they don't have a good knowledge of the cult of Muhammad. Like now, I saw the video of David Wood speaking about Samuel. But none of them, all of those, even the one who included the debate, told them that this is a story in the Quran. The very same story in the Quran, but they don't know. So always the Muhammadan, they come to people who do not know really their religion. Or they have limited knowledge. We need to learn, educate ourselves before we open our mouth. And don't debate on things which is, it doesn't make any difference. Let us debate about the violence in the Bible and the violence in the Quran. But this is not a topic to debate about. Why? Because, well, we believe that God, he burned cities. Yes, he did. But that's very violent. We believe that God, he, uh, he sent his flood. He destroyed all mankind except few. So the argument of both sides is not an intelligent argument. And the Muslim, they focus in what is not intelligent. So they can look smart. Do we have any Muhammadan who want to prove to me that Islam make you smart? Would like to call me? Immediately? Do we? Where are they, those who want to debate David Wood, apostate prophet? You know, where is this guy, Daniel? Why, are you, why, why you don't even dare to give me his Skype? How come they are lined up to talk to those people? Because simply there, they can say whatever they want and they can get away with it. And then the whole debate become about having sex with babies. You will notice that they got this guy, Daniel. Yeah, he said this and then a previous uh, uh, debate with a Christian, he said to him, this Daniel, he said, do you support Allah against nine years old boy to have sex with nine years old girl? The Christian, you know, he is not a good debater too. Shouldn't you say to him, you idiot? Law should be only for those who they are aware 
of what they are doing. You don't punish someone he is not much sure for what he did. Very simple, support Allah. So the Muslim now he holds it. Oh, you see, he don't support the law. He don't support the law. Even in the stupid religion of Muhammad, it says, Al Qalam, Rufi'ah. The, the, the law, the law and the regulation is not approved of when someone is immature or crazy. So the Muslim, they debate those who they are supposedly, they want to debate Muslims and they have some knowledge. But in this, in the reality, they are ignorant. He can answer him from from the from the same stupid religion, but they don't know. So the Christian was debating. He did not really uh, give him what he deserved. The Christians who are dis discussing the debate after it, like David Wood and Apostle Prophet, did not really hit the nail. What law? In the stupid religion of Islam, even in that stupid religion, it says if you are little, there's no regulation upon you. Someone he is asleep because he's not aware what's happening. And young, until he is. you know, a growing person, and the crazy. Always we notice that Muslims, they debate only those who they think they can accomplish a mission with them. Here we don't find them. We have our Skype open for hours. Not a single Abdul he dare to call. And if there is somebody he call, he is a person who is nobody. Which means he will not lose his career. Do Zakir Naik accept to call? Or to let me call? Do Shabir Ali? Shabir Ali, they ask him, why you don't debate Christian Prince? Shabir Ali agreed to debate me in ABN. He thought I am the same as the rest. Then he searched. He found my book in Amazon. He bought my book. He sent an email to ABN saying to them that he is busy doing his PhD. Two weeks after, he's debating again with David Wood, which is not a debate. <laughs> They line up only if they find that they have opportunity. Like the potato Mimi Hijab and Ali Dawa, when they heard that there's an Arab guy involved in the debate, which is supposedly, you know, this TV show, stupid TV show, uh, they backed down. And in the beginning, they were excited. Yeah, an urgent meeting, etc. And then they heard, there's an Arab guy. And Robert Spencer supposedly have a lot of knowledge, but I don't think he have much. Even with those, they run away. They put their tail between their, their legs, and they run away. So what happened to those who they just want to be in, in TV, and they want to be more known so they can defend Allah? They heard that one of them is an ex-Muslim. He have good knowledge in Islam. Rashid, he have a very good knowledge, but still he's short of it. And he is very polite. And this is other weakness. You know, when you are so polite, many of the audience, especially Muslims, they think you are weak. This is the truth. You are polite, that means you are weak. That means you are scared. That means you do not know. Otherwise, you are, why you are polite?
Do we have any Muhammadan? Who is a Muhammadan would like to join us? Maybe, maybe. Who is a Muhammadan would like to show everybody that you Muslims know what you are talking about? I'm not going to ask you a question. You ask me the question. The topic is Muhammad a prophet or not. There's a Christian, he asked the, uh, Shabir Ali, why you don't debate Christian prince? Shabir Ali says, um, um, uh, 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 a Christian prince is an individual, for those who don't, do not know who is a, a Christian prince, uh, and uh, so he contacted me, I never contacted him, never, not even once, never, otherwise go, and, go and, and show them the email, do you know even my email, I contacted you, great there, hello? Yeah, I just came to ask the million dollar question, uh, Shabir, when will you, uh, will you ever debate Christian Prince? Thank you very much. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I, 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 for those of you who don't know Christian Prince, uh, he is uh, a, a personality who has been uh, operating some sort of an internet radio broadcast, as far as I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, he contacted me a long time ago asking if I would debate him, and I said yes. Uh, uh, and, and I contacted him. I did contact him. <laughs> I contacted <laughs> Shabir Ali. If you are listening, get me busted. Remind me. Can you show them the email I sent to you? Me? I never contacted you. It was ABN. Did not even tell me who are you. ABN. They said there's a Muslim sheikh. He wanna look. You know, wanna debate. I said sure. I don't even know your name. Then suddenly, I saw a person, his name is Shabir Ali, buying my book from Amazon. And then I received an email from ABN. They said the debate is set up to that date, and the name is Shabir Ali. <laughs> then uh, eventually, I bought his book. <laughs> <laughs> why you bought my book? Listen, listen, why you bought my book? So this guy decide after they told him you and the funny by the way, those Christians, they always I mean I don't know what to do with them. I to, I tell them one million times. Don't tell the guy this is a Christian prince. If he knew he will back up, he will go. They went and said uh, the name of the brother Christian Prince, when he, what? The guy, he sent an email, says bye-bye. Bye-bye. He have a career. Do you remember those uh, Filipinos who they brought me three shakes to debate me? And I schooled them. I spoke to them like for 15 minutes. I said, never tell them that Christian Prince is the one who will debate. What they did? Imagine they put a title Christian Prince versus I mean I 15 minutes I'm just telling them don't tell them the whole point of my conversation in private with them. I don't care for the topic, I don't care, don't tell me anything. Don't tell them that the one who will debate them is a Christian prince. They put a picture of somebody, I don't know who's the and suppose this is me. Christian Prince debating the I said, what the heck? Didn't I tell you don't tell the guy? The three of them are gone. This is why our Skype is open and none of them dare to call. All those who make videos, where are you?
The AI is not working good, not fast enough to generate a lie. Somebody saying you are heretic, normal Christian reject you. Look who is talking about heretic. <laughs> a believer in the flying carpet of Sulaiman. <laughs> Now listen, listen, and what make me really uh, enjoy Islam and when they speak about heretic, heretic, hey, Muslims, what about you call me and let us see the heretic, let us see, you don't even know who is your God, I keep asking the Muhammadan, who is Allah, have you ever heard of a Muslim, give me the answer, Allah is the creator, Abdul, hold on, Hindus, they believe there's many creators. Uh, Buddhists, uh, Christians believe in creator. So this is not a question. Who is your God? Do you know? They don't know. Okay, what Allah mean? They don't know. If you search in Google, you will find every single Abdul give you a different answer. The smart one of them, they says Allah is a word coming from the Aramaic, from the word Al-Ilah. Okay, what, what, okay, that means you don't even, you, are you saying to me your God does not have a name? If Allah mean God, then why you say in the Shahada, Shahada funny, there's no God but Allah. You should say there's no God but God. So when they want, Allah is a name. When they want, it's not. When they want, He's the maker. When they want, he's the best of the creators. I, I thought he's the only creator. When they want, he is the one who created the flying carpet. The second you question the flying carpet story, everything go in limbo. So a man in his army sitting in the top of a mattress. In the top of what? Mattress. And this guy want to teach the Christians, you know, we Muslims are the best in the world. Look at those cows. Look at those cows. What is the benefit of those cows? A Muslim who have a Mercedes Benz behind him, made by the Christians, a phone made by the Christians or the Chinese, is talking about what the benefit of non-believers. The Muslims are the one who bring benefit. Okay, what? Tell us. What tell us? See, just I, I want that really to, to sink in. These cows. What makes you better than them is that you worship Allah. Just I just really want you to just look at these cows, honestly. No disrespect to the cows. But this cow is better than you if you don't pray. If you don't pray, I'm, I'm sorry, I really want this point to be driven home. These cows are better than you if you don't pray. And all I see is this, you know, stuff to make people watch. This is about getting views. Right, that's, that's how it seems. Is there really any substance? What are they offering the people? Nothing. Reaction video. Yeah, all we do is reaction video. We'll bring someone. Oh, he said, well, I said, but yeah, remember that? <laughs> This is Dawa. Why just come over here? They had elbows sitting next to each other. We're just sitting on the camera and drinking coffee and drinking shai. This is a guy making fun of Lady Dawa. And Lady Dawa might make her making a reaction of the reaction. The guy is saying to, saying to the Muslims, what was the point of those reaction? A guy, he opened his mouth, like, uh -huh, uh -huh. he put it in the thumb. Larry Dawa now, he is making a reaction of a video saying, don't make reaction. <laughs> this is the same as the Hadith says, the Prophet said, whoever wrote for me anything except the Hadith, erase it. Larry Dawa, he decided to follow the Prophet. But he wrote it down. He did not erase it. What da'wah? What substance? Go to the channel. Nothing. Nothing. Why does Islam prohibit a Muslim from eating pork? Let us analyze what are the logical reasons and scientific reasons for the prohibition of eating of pork. Today science tells us pig is the most shameless animal on the face of the earth. It is the only animal that invites its friends to see when it's having sex with its mate. A person who's... <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what, what, what? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what the pig he does? He invites his friends to see him when he is having sex? No. No way. This is scientifically. Book. Let us analyze what are the logical reasons and scientific reasons for the prohibition of eating of pork. Today science tells us pig is the most shameless animal on the face of the earth. It is the only animal that invites its friends. <laughs> it's like, like a man. Can you say it slow? Invite his friends? Friends. I invite who? <laughs> what? He is a shameful animal? That's deep. If a donkey like this, he became their best. What about the rest? If this is their best. This is the guy they put him in TV stations. 12 satellites he have. He have more than 500 employees paid by Qatar in Saudi Arabia. 500 just to post in the internet to do jihad this is their best this is their this is their, 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 now you see why they were never there let me speak to them so this animal mr pig shame on you may allah make you barbecue he do what a muslim from eating pork let us analyze what are the logical reasons and scientific reasons for the prohibition of eating of pork. Today science tells us pig is the most shameless animal on the face of the earth. It is the only animal that invites its friends to see when it's having sex with its mate. A person who's astray, a person who doesn't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has less value on this earth than these cows. These cows are not creating chaos. Elijah is also, the word Elijah in the, in the Hebrew language means God is with us. <laughs> the word Elijah in the, in the Hebrew language means God is with us. Uh -uh. It says you're a pusillanimous, timorous, pusillanimous, ultra crepidarian, dilettante. Does breaking wind inside break wudu <laughs> mean inside the house as opposed to going out and falling in public and making a scene i don't know yeah what i told you guys so many times maybe some of you are hit this in the first time wallahi in jannah what do you want you want girls jannahs there's girls girls there's girls what do you want drink there's rivers of wine you want yards there's yards gold brick silver brick gold brick silver brick you can chill you can party you can rave you can play up in jannah jannah is so banging look what allah said <laughs> Allah understand. Breaking wind inside. Where are you, how are you going to break wind inside? When you break wind, it happened that the whole idea of breaking the wind that is it broke from you know what and it went outside. If it's still inside, it's not breaking wind anymore. <laughs> and therefore, it doesn't affect you. Uh, look how serious Brothers, that. pay attention and look at me. Don't talk to each other. Look at me. Look, look. Look, because it's me. Because I'm telling you a hadith for the Prophet. Look at me when I tell you the hate of the Prophet. I mean, look at this potato. He claimed to be a real Muslim, a Mujahid, but he sat in the chair. He don't go to join ISIS to defend Allah and his religion. You are just a son of Muta. Look at me. Look at me. Like he is so serious. He loved the Prophet. Potato. What about you do jihad and you call me at least? And tell me, look at me. And the, the girl is waiting for you in the heaven, brother. And you have a yacht? You will have a yacht in the heaven? I thought there's no ocean there. There's a yacht in the heaven? Where you will put your yacht? In the river of honey? That will be sticky. There's a yacht in the heaven? And the girls? Are you talking about Andrew Tate's? When he took the girls in the yacht? And he put a cigar in his mouth. That is the heaven? When the Prophet Hadith is mentioned, you shut your mouth! You shut your mouth! Did you shut your anus too? The guy was talking about farting a second ago. 
I'm not saying all oh, you believe. Don't talk loud over the statement of the prophet. I'm telling But the guy you think is a prophet, he said, Allah, he said, don't speak when the prophet is talking. <laughs> Are you the prophet? <laughs> I love that Chinese when they said he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. I take it easy, man. What happened to you? You love the prophet so much, don't you? That's why you are so excited. And look at the two guys next to him. Look at the heck. And those are those. Those supposedly are the one who want to teach. Tell us, tell us more. What, what, what would happen next? In your hadith, you shut up. You shut up. The prophet said when he looks at the Kaaba, he said, "Oh Kaaba, what's better than you? If, if, you're so if, beloved. You're loved. Oh Kaaba, it's not a joke. Are you gonna punch the Kaaba as a joke?" I'll buy you a ticket, you're a bad man. I'll buy you a ticket right now. I'll buy your first class ticket to Saudi Arabia. Go to Mecca, punch the Kaaba as a joke. Sleep. What, 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 what? Abdul, the Kaaba is a joke. People, they used to go naked around the Kaaba. I can show you the hate right now. Naked, totally naked. And by the way, until now, Muslims, they go around the Kaaba naked. They put just a sheet. Sheet, like the Hindus, like the Buddhists. They wear no underwear underneath. They shave their head the same as the Hindus, the same as the Buddhists. And they show one shoulder the same as the Hindus and the same as, same, same as the Buddhists. That's where your origin is coming from. They have a black stone, you have a black stone. They have a vagina, you have a vagina. The black stone is a vagina. And why you are so excited? al Qurmuti, he destroyed the Kaaba. He took the black stone, he made it a poop stone for more than 21 years. Allah could not save it. And then they have to pay him money to get the black stone. And what they got now? Little tiny rocks. There's no black stone. Continue. See what happens to you. So you beseech and you beg Allah and you seek intercession uh, from Allah via those two names. So you should say often, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum. Of course, not like the Sufis. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How does the Sufis do it? How, how? What do you want? I told you man last time when a group of people tried to attack the cat at the time of the Prophet, Allah destroyed them by sending birds to rain down pellets on them from the sky. Is that the Awaks or the F 16? Guys, when Allah, when He heard, that there is a Christian army is coming to destroy the camp. Allah, he sent birds and they throw rocks at them. True story. So at that time, the Kaaba was surrounded by more than 360 idols. Allah decided to protect the Kaaba. But when the Kaaba have only Muslim around it, Allah did not move. The Kaaba was destroyed in the history of Islam many times. Many times. Destroyed to the ground. In fact, the Kaaba today does not exist in the same location. You can go and make a study about it. They move it. Where is your Kaaba? Why Allah did not send birds when Al Qurmati came? When the Caliphate they came and they launched it with the Manjaniq and they destroy every, everybody there, including the whole Kaaba. Where was your God, Allah? when the Kaaba was flooded tons of times, every year almost. Each time little rain come. Each year. Little rain. You know, uh, Mecca is a... The Kaaba location is a low ground, very low ground. So each time they have a little... rain the Kaaba is a flooded if you ask the Muslims who is the one choosing the location of the Kaaba they will say Allah imagine you hire an engineer to choose for you the location of your house and then he chose the lower point in that in the in the in that area where all the people remember those people there until now they don't have a sewage there's no sewage they use something called bayara. Bayara is a shit hole, literally shit hole, where all your poop go in that hole. 
In America, they call it septic tank, but you know, the, the one they do it in the West is way, way, we cannot compare it. So when the rain comes, all those holes who fell off Popo, they will float and they will go all the way down around the Kaaba. So you will find the Kaaba surrounded by Pupu, literally. Pupu will float on the water, on the top of the water. Allah, He chosen a location. Allah, He protect the Kaaba. Allah sent bird, but Allah cannot stop a flood to overtake the Kaaba. And each time they have a flood, by the way, the Kaaba collapse. Now the Kaaba is not collapsing because now they put cement. Actually, the Kaaba used to have no roof before. The reason they put roof, because other towns, they used to come and throw garbage from the top of this. why they, they keep uh, uh, making the wall higher and higher and higher. So people will not throw garbage. There's a 26 Kaaba in the Arabian Peninsula. Each town compete with the other Kaaba, which means they have their own Kaaba, and they want people to come here so they can spend their own. It's like a mall. The Kaaba is a mall. It's a market. It's a bazaar. People sit around it, sell and buy. And one of the business is religion. So everyone, he brings his idol, and people, they give donation to the idol. And the one who don't want this Kaaba, because they have their own Kaaba, they want the customers to come here, they come at night, and they throw garbage from the top of the wall. So the people, they keep increasing the height of the wall, increasing it, increasing it. So it can be very hard to throw garbage inside. And the point of garbage is to say to you, well, if this is a the Kaaba of God, how come God allow garbage to be thrown there? And then at the end, they decide to make a roof. And they put a door. This is the Kaaba. You see, we are talking about not long time ago. Not long time ago. We are talking about when the camera are exist. Those pictures. Not before cameras. Remember that. So how it was before. This is after they have concrete. This is after they have uh, uh, engineers come in now they have oil all the money you can imagine and this guy is saying to you that Allah protected the Kaaba who in the world want to believe in such a garbage and Allah protected the Kaaba when a Christian army is coming but not when the pagan are gone, which means the Christian army is coming according to the story, but there's no proof of it, not a single proof of it, in, even in history. And you know, here you notice, by the way, this story about the birds. Uh, it's speaking about an elephant. This is why even the chapter in the Quran is called this way. If you go to the end of the Quran, let us see here. An army is coming from Ethiopia, and they brought with them elephants. Who in the world would believe? that an elephant, he can cross the sea, cross the land, cross the desert. The desert have no water. Elephants, they need at least 600 liters of water a day, not a month. Elephant, in fact, if they stay under the sun for 10 hours, they will collapse. This is why during daytime, they sit inside the water or they go under the shade of the trees. Because elephants don't sweat. This is why elephants, they spray water in their body. They cool it down. In other way, they are taking a shower. So who in the world want to believe such a story? And then, 
Allah is not sending angels to fight this army. He's sending birds, and those birds are carrying a cooked bricks. Cooked. Who want to believe in such a garbage? Look at this story. Why you Muslims are buying the awaks flying in the top, not buying actually, the Americans are the one who run it, in the top of your Kaaba. Do you have the birds of Allah protect the land of Allah? Why are you afraid from Iran? You do not need weapon. Look how funny the story. The whole story is, you know, five lines. What happened? Who? Who is the name of this army? Who is who? Who is the king? Nobody knows. Which year? When? Nobody knows. All the idea of Islam is to give you stories. And you shake your head and say, I agree. Don't understand, don't question, don't learn. Otherwise, you will become an infidel. You will leave Islam. Here we have Suleiman and his army. They are riding a mattress, according to Mufti Mink. In fact, it's a carpet. Made sort of a wooden. One wonders exactly how it was. We only know the word that is used here to describe it. Say, more or less, a mattress or a platform. His army or members of his army were instructed to sit on it, and he told the wind, "Take it." It would take that. It would take them a journey of two months in one day. Drop them off and come back. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu. What would happen? The wind would blow it. Imagine hey. he instructed the wind. Allahu Akbar. Guys. They are talking today about technology, flying airplanes. We have it long before you. Flying carpet. Wind. See? Allah is going green. You don't even use like fuel. Wind. Now I know why English it says break wind. The Muslims, they were breaking wind since long time ago. In fact, if I go right now, just to show you how stupid this religion is. If I go right now and search for breaking wings, breaking what? Wings. Okay, what you will get if you search for breaking wings? You will get a lot of things. This is a religion of a breaking wind. Let us see. I search for a broken wind. I found the Billy Dancer. What is that? Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> On the house fly, because a lot of people are asking the, that everything has been proven by science. But this saying of the Prophet والسلام, that he said, when a fly falls in your vessel, then dip it complete because one side contains extra, uh, so and so and so. He did not write uh, the full question. The, the, the hadith is well known. The hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. Uh -huh. And the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever a fly falls into your uh, utensils, your mm -hmm. cup, your uh, mm -hmm. vessel, mm -hmm. then dip it immediately yeah. and toss it away. Ooh. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? For 
the fly uh -huh. has no illness, epidemics, diseases under one wing. Really? And under the other wing, it has the remedy and the cure for that. Now, this hadith was widely accepted by the Muslims because this is something from the unseen. From the unseen. It's widely accepted, brother. The Prophet is so clean. I was searching for breaking wind. I get this. My mistake. <laughs> Do you remember the Abdul who made the video a long time ago? Says that the Catholic brother, they hired two uh, 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 scientists and they told them we want to get Prophet Muhammad busted by proving that this hadith to be false. And then, brother, surprise happened. When those scientists, they start studying, I can find the video. They start studying, they find that it is scientifically true. And then they call the company, it's called Pfizer. And they told them the secret of this hadith, and they told them not to tell anybody. But he knew about it, but nobody knows. Nobody in the world, but he knew the guy in the video. And then, brother, they used the same hadith to discover a cure for AIDS. The video is there. Cure for what? AIDS. From what? From the wing of the fly. One wing have disease, the other wing have the cure. Brother, uh, tell us more. And we believe in the Quran, we believe in the Sunnah. If we look at the, the miracles in the Quran and Sunnah, we'll find that like 95% of them are proven through science. 95. We have to be honest with you. Not 100%. Nine, any name more for me is proven to be scientifically true? Guys, yeah, 95. Listen, listen, listen. We have the, we have the numbers. Numbers is talking. 95% of them, they are true. Like what? Flying carpet? Like the baby created from a, from a dead blood and the sperm became a blood? What what, uh, what 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 do you mean 95 percent like the hail is coming from mountains in heaven like women she have a sperm coming from her ribs huh 95 percent are proven to be true continue Since today i'll assume the five percent that science did not prove uh -huh. to be true as well because ah so this one is one of the five percent brother Oh, why, why, what do you mean why? All what we need is a fly. Take it to the laboratory and let us see if it's true or not. I mean, is a mission impossible? It's a fly. You do not even need to look for them. Just put for some food and the flies will come. You put your poo, poo You can collect 50 flies right away, immediately. And then make your study. Bring the most expensive laboratory in the world and find us the cure in one wing. And the disease in the other wing. Look at the wisdom of Allah. One wing have a disease, and one wing have the cure. Smash Allah. And this is one of the five percent which is not proven to be until now, but it's going to happen in the future. Why you are waiting? <laughs> All what you need is a fly, <laughs> guys. It's, the future will prove it. The future, the future. Uh, uh, Abdul, why we dip the fly in the soup? I mean, why we don't dip only the wings? So now you have the whole shitty fly was standing on the shit with her legs on your soup. <laughs> what happened? Muhammad, because he's a savage, low, trash, you know, low, 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 low uh, class person, a fly, you know, fell down in his soup. They said to him, Prophet, Prophet, look at the shit in your, excuse me, look at the shit in your soup. The Prophet, he, he saw it, it's in front of him, and he keep eating, you know. And now, like what? Okay, people saw me. So, he said, okay, okay, listen. If a fly fell down in your soup, you do this. Dip it, dip it, dip it, and drink it. What? This is, this is how we can fight Corona, brother. Dr. Muhammad. In the Quran and Sunnah, 
we'll find that like 95% of them are proven through science today. Proven. I'll assume the 5% that science did not prove. What do you mean you assume, you idiot? You should say, I'm sure. Shame on you. Muslim, did you hear what he said? He assumed, which means maybe. That is a shameful statement. Brother, arrest him. Brother, take him to court. He assumed the coward. He assumed, what's wrong with you? You are assuming, not sure, that the 5% of the told talk of Allah is true. Assuming? Do you know what assume mean? Oh, you forgot your name is Sheikh Asim. Ah, that's why your name is Asim, because you assume. I saw your mom, she spoiled you. Your name is Asim, she called you like, assume, are you there, assume? Come in to me, come to me. It's time to assume that you are smart. To be true as well, because we have a track record. If only 5% we have a or track 10% record. of the miracles, scientific miracles of the Quran and the Sunnah were proven, and 90 were dubious. Hold on, hold on. Isn't it those are the same idiot now? They say to us that scientific miracles in the Quran is a lie? And doesn't make sense? <laughs> oh boy, I will say it again to you. Listen carefully. I will what? I will say it to you again and again and again. You like it, you don't you like, like it, I'm going to say it to you. Come on, are you sure? Yes, yes. I'm going to say it to you. It was not a slip of a tongue. It's a lie. There's no scientific miracle in the Quran. Wow. You know, the, the, the poopoo keep coming. It's endless poopoo. Endless poopoo. Well, how many videos I have to show in my screen? I don't know. I mean, my screen has became like uh, full of uh, videos, one after one. I keep, okay, let's go here. Okay, Abdul, go. Tell us what's happening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Okay, so guys, this is a quick video, inshallah. I didn't want to do a dedicated video to this. I was here with the brothers uh, filming for the podcast. And for one, I'm sat here. I'll quickly uh, touch up on this quickly because it's not really that important. So in the Andrew Tate video that I did, I mentioned that the scientific miracles in the Quran were debunked. By the way, this for is some odd reason. This is the fastest, the fastest speaking liars in the Muslim world. So you don't understand. You know, the whole point is speaking fast so you don't focus. Where are you going? Are you like, are you a rush? Are you a rush limbo? What's wrong with you? What? How? I cannot challenge you in speaking so fast. Even Zach and I did not do that. And don't forget to let your mom buy you some hormones so your voice will become a voice of a man. We are proud of it. Go. Okay, so guys, this is a quick video, inshallah. I didn't want to do a dedicated video to this. I was here with the brothers uh, filming for the podcast. Yeah. For one, I'm sat here. I'll quickly uh, touch up on this quickly because it's not really that important. So in the Andrew Tate video that I did... It's not really that important? What? What? This is not really important? So all the scientific miracle in the Quran, it turned to be a fraud. And you are saying this is not really important? So for 20 years, you are Muhammadan. Give headache to the whole world about scientific miracles of the Quran, printed books, make videos, and you yourself, you said you became a Muslim. You are a Muslim by birth, you idiot. What a liar. You are a Muslim. You are born from a Muslim family. So you became a Muslim because scientific miracle in the Quran. But later you find it's not scientific. I mentioned that the scientific miracles in the Quran were debunked. And for some odd reason, funnily enough, that as if they thought that it was a slip of the tongue, I'll repeat it again very carefully. The scientific miracles argument in the Quran got debunked. What a bunk you are. Shame on you. Do you know what happened when somebody says such a thing? I will give you an example. When the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, 
he agree with the Christians in some matter. Allah got upset from him. The Prophet, he went to his home, he want to go to the bathroom. He unzipped, he could not find his penis. And then the Prophet, he asked Allah for forgiveness. And then he invoked Allah. And then Allah, he sent him a dish of shish kebab with the angel Jibreel. He ate it, he got the power of 40 men, and after that, his penis is working. Is that what you are trying to do? So you say this, Allah get upset from you, he send you a dish kebab, and then you cannot find your, you know, and then you become 40 men. You are more powerful than 40 men Muslim, 40 Muslim men. Let me say it to you, this was not a slip of a tongue. It was a slip of what? Private part. They thought that it was a slip of the tongue. I'll repeat it again, very carefully. The scientific miracles argument in the Quran got debunked. Yeah, I hope my tajweed was on point. So Allah, when he challenged the people to make Quran like this, is debunked. <laughs> because if you say, when we speak about scientific miracles, right? And the Quran speak about how the baby is made, it turned to be stupid. How the earth and the heaven is made, it turned to be stupid. Uh, Allah don't even remember which one he created first. The mountains, the trees, uh, the stars. Which one is created first? Uh, Allah don't remember. In one verse he says something, the other verse say the opposite. So all of those are debunked. Continue. So when I said this, a lot of um, Islamophobes were celebrating as if I was a... Islamophobe? 99% of those who make videos to oppose you are Muslims, potato. They're Muslims. Oh my gosh, like this video is going to be me apologizing. And no, listen, it got debunked. Now, let's give some context for some Muslims so they can understand. For example, and I'll tell you where this comes from. And you know why many people in the Duat, many Duat, YouTubers, my colleagues, that, like brothers that I work with, didn't do a video. Why did you say that? Because they know it as well. In what sense? Brothers and sisters, I was having a debate with a guy called Phil. Yes? This guy is a scientist or whatever he is, for that matter. I was debating with him. And I can remember this very clearly a couple of years ago. And I took an ayah in the Quran, which I am not qualified to do, which is give it, start doing tafsir. So there was an ayah in the Quran which says that there are seven heavens. So me, I was claiming, because of this whole scientific narrative, that this is talking about the ozone layer. Number one, it is haram for me to do that. Why? Because how can I give an understanding to the Quran, the ayah, with no qualifications? And who of who have ever said that this is the ozone layer? Then I was having a debate with this atheist guy and trying to tell him that there's seven ozone layers. And he was saying to me, no, my friend, there are six ozone layers. And I was saying seven. He was saying six, seven, six, seven, six. And we said, let's go to the NASA page. So we went to the NASA page. And in the NASA page, guess what? He said the argument was apparently from the recent findings, whatever it may be. This probably changed. <laughs> and this is my whole point of the video, yeah? Science changes. He said that there is... Science changes, huh? Five ozone layers. So five. There are five. There are five now. There were six, but before there were seven, but now there are five. Yeah, in NASA website, they were like, you know, because you know, like, you know, as you know, you know the thing, there's five, you know, six, seven, and uh, you know, uh, you go uh, NASA. So a Muslim now, he want to know what the Quran is saying from NASA. They don't want to open Ibn Kathir and Al-Qurtubi Al-Jalalain no more. We will go, go to NASA. Uh, and Abdul, just to show you how stupid you are. Just to show every Muslim how stupid you Abdul are. If you are saying to the guy that Allah created seven heavens and those are the atmosphere. That means the whole earth and heaven is just atmosphere. <laughs> This is what you just said, how stupid you are. So now even when he tried to fix it, he's stupid. Because how in the world you understood that this is atmosphere? If your God talking about where he put the stars, isn't it your God he said that he put the stars in the lowest heaven? So is the stars located in the lowest layers of the atmosphere? I mean, what is that? Is that the symptoms of the camera you rain? When I wrote my books, Deception of Allah and Quran and Science, respond to those lies. And it's a long time ago, before those guys agreed. And you will see now some Christian, they say, they take the credit that they are the one who refuted. 
Uh, you know, we spoke about this for uh, 20 years. It is me before any of you. They bunked them all, made them shish kebab. And the Muslim, they swarm Amazon to stop my books from being printed and published. We made them literally shish kebab. So the other guy, he says, there is a scientific miracle. This guy, he said, there is no scientific miracle. Which, which, which one is the guy? Which guy is the guy? Which guy is not the guy? 95% of the scientific miracle, they are proven to be true. Not 96. To be true as well, because we have a track record. If only 5% or 10% of the miracles, scientific miracles of the Quran and the Sunnah were proven and 90 were dubious, you and I may have a reason to doubt. Mm. But it is the other way around. Oh. The vast majority, 80, 90 percent, are all proven mm. without any doubt by the disbelievers themselves. By the disbelievers. So any logical person uh -huh. would come to the remaining 10, 15, even 20 percent that was not proven to be wrong but not proven to be correct either they will uh, you know this is a person he's talking about logical hey, abdul i really like your logic how much time talking about what logical oh, okay hmm. all right all right i don't know this video will take forever. The guys will stay with you all day, all night. What happened here? Okay. When a Muslim he speak about logic, we need to understand that Islamic logic is beyond your imagination. Can we keep hamsters as pets? The Prophet ﷺ instructed us to kill five types of animals whether we find them in the hill area, which is out of the haram, or inside the haram. And he also ordered us in different hadith to kill mice. Because a mouse is a type of an animal that is evil by nature. And it carries a lot of diseases and the plague is one of them among mm. others and it's known to be destructive and with evil intent even it may take a piece of thread and get it uh, 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 burnt from or set it on fire from a candle or fire in the house and take that thread and burn the whole house with it so mice are evil and we are ordered in Islam to kill them. A hamster is very similar to mice. It looks like mice. And as they say, it's about 86 to 90 species of mice that are found there. So a hamster is a rodent and it falls under the same category of mice and hence it is not permissible to keep them as pets mm. because of the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ to kill them wherever we find them and to dispose of them. To, the, to kill them and the, and the hamster? The lizard is a kind of insect. I mean, all kind of stupid things you can imagine with this religion. All kind of stupid things. And let they say to you, why I'm a Muslim. And look, I am all this time waiting for a Muslim to contact me to say to me, why is a Muslim? Not a single Abdul there to tell me why is a Muslim. Not a single Abdul. Potatoes. I hope you guys enjoy your time today with me. And uh, I'm, you know, uh, I, I noticed that uh, the previous video, not, not many people support it and nobody share it, which is very normal act from a Christians. You know, I'm not expecting much. 
and maybe this one is the same uh, for me i do my duty and uh, who support who share who give a like who do make a comment you know we cannot tell people what to do but obviously not only the muslims are fake people who don't have god there's many christians they never met god they never saw god they never know what god is they claim to be christians but a very little thing to do is just to make a comment they are not willing to do fake people fake christians fake believers will not know what they are doing and i'm not saying to you are fake because you don't make a comment i'm saying to me to yourself from their fruit you shall know them there's no way a true christian you don't make a comment to get them busted to protect his family from being misled because when a christian they go mute they go silence either they are being coward like muhammad or they are fake christians otherwise you allow the one who have big mouth to mislead your children and you don't care or you are fake so i'm not talking about making a comment in my videos I'm talking in general. Christians who don't do take any action to fight any garbage in this world, they are fake Christians. I want to say thank you for those who care, and I say I'm sorry for you for those who don't. Time will come, and you will know what you did you did to yourself. God is good, so is Jesus, and Islam proven to be a false cult. We are not people who believe that if you give a donation to someone, you go to heaven. You cannot bribe God. We are not the people who believe if you touch a black stone, it erases your sin. No one will erase your sin unless you repent. And you repent from your heart, as Jesus said, and sin no more. You cannot fool God. You cannot bribe God. You cannot cheat with God. You are a truth. The truth about you either will set you free or will send you to hell. He said, from their fruit you shall know them. And he said, search for the truth. Look for it. And the truth will set you free. So I pray that the Lord always will open your eyes. But you don't open your eyes unless you wash your face. Wake up. Do it yourself first. Start looking, start searching. And then when you find the truth, which is the Messiah, the truth will set you free. Islam is a religion of stupidity. Islam is a religion of low IQ. Fairy tales, fiction and madness, violence of and sex. In fact, 90% of it is sexual. The rest of it is about worshiping Muhammad and his sexual organs and flying carpets. And don't forget the advice of the day. If a fly fell in your soup, Dip it, dip it, dip it, because there's one wing have a disease and the other wing have a cure. Muslims, I just found you the cure. It is a fly. Eat it, enjoy it, and let us make a reaction of your video if you dare to do it. As long as you believe in it, make a video. I want to see how healthy you stay and how yummy your soup, by the way.